Alright, uh, we'll move on to the financial question. So, is there any update on the financial roadmap that implies IMQ will turn to profitability in terms of net income in 2025? Since IMQ will be selling the quantum computers from 2024, which will generate huge revenue, as I believe. What do you think, Donald? Because things are always changing, mm -hmm. it's impossible to say. Like, Amazon was going to be profitable after three years because then that could ship enough books. Mm -hmm. like, nobody even buys books on Amazon anymore. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and so what we are doing is we're setting up a way for us to reach our current roadmap, mm -hmm. which we fully believe that we can. But it's possible that we also start developing other things that mm -hmm. will change that roadmap and will also change how we finance it. But there's nothing has changed in our financial outlook. We're very comfortable with where we are. We are the best capitalized mm -hmm. quantum computing hardware manufacturing company mm -hmm. in the world right. uh, by a long stretch. And that is an amazing power for us, which we can use to develop more technology, or we can also find partners to help us do that. Mm -hmm. If we're getting to the point where we're selling lots and lots and lots of quantum computers, we'll have to stand up factories. Mm -hmm. That will drive, right. drive profitability down mm -hmm. for some period. So it's just really difficult to kind of predict that future. Mm -hmm. What we can say is we have sufficient funds now to kind of get to AQ64 mm -hmm. and kind of get to the promised land of finding the first applications that have quantum advantage. I guess people wanted to know that the financial roadmap was established two or three years ago and now you guys are talking about QC sales mm -hmm. so people want to know if the uh, revenue will be happening a lot faster than the uh, previous outlook well it's already, it, so far it's been already happening a lot faster than we mm -hmm. originally predicted um, so we kind of expect that to continue so what is the total estimated number of employees that will be working in the manufacturing facility in Pocel? I, I think it will be a function, these uh, manufacturing, it's a function of volume. Uh -huh. like yeah. if, if we have a lot of orders, then we'll be uh, making more. Okay. If we don't have orders, so it's a bit of a... Chicken and egg. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. a bit of a variable there. Mm -hmm. uh, we need some infrastructure right. to do that. But exactly how, how we ramp up depends on mm -hmm. kind of our, mm -hmm. our business growth. Mm -hmm. So. I don't think we have an accurate number. I think the I 40 think so. to 60 is kind of what, we, what it takes to mm. build the infrastructure. Right? Okay. So the People want to know what is the product that will be produced in Basel first? It Will it be Aria or Forte or new generation of QC? Will that be answerable? It will be a new generation of QC. Um, none of, not Aria or Forte? No. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, and people wanted to know, uh, could you be a little bit more specific on the numbers of the nine figures that we talked about from occurring from selling the QC because the number range is really wide. Is you asking the question, how much are they? Is that? Yes. <laughs> um, we don't publish prices on it, okay. but you should think expensive. Again, I, I think, you know, we, we speculated that if the demand pick up quickly, we can we get to nine, nine figure bookings sooner right. than we expected. Over a series of years, yeah. Yeah. and we years. are well on our path to do that. Uh -huh. um, as, as we've seen, there's a lot of interest in purchasing uh, full systems. Mm -hmm. Usually, you can think of a quantum computer as selling in the multiple of tens of millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I guess people... Each one's quite significant financially. At this stage of computing, of quantum computing, we're not just making iPhones and they're all the same, the standardized and have one price. Right. Every single computer is slightly different from the next, uh -huh. and we tailor them to the individual needs uh -huh. of the customer. And that means that we also like to have the opportunity to price them slightly differently mm -hmm. so that we can give the customer what they want. Okay, he wants to know about uh, IMQ's cash Will that be more focused on, used on the production or on the development? The answer to that is yes. To both. We have to do both. Both are very, very important. Like mm -hmm. We need to spend a lot of money on development because we need to continue to mm -hmm. use new generation of mm -hmm. PC. We're mm -hmm. not where we want to be. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we also want to produce computers for our customers to use and mm -hmm. buy. And the two complement each other nicely right. because the production side is looking at making it more stable and smaller mm -hmm. and 
I mean, one of the interesting things about photonic systems is as you shrink them, they become better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so we have two different teams mm -hmm. kind of, they have different goals, right? but at the end, they turns out both teams uh -huh. are actually working on producing better quantum computers. Uh -huh. um, and I can imagine in the future that the production side of the house is working on producing manufacturable, you know, easy to produce, and some of those technologies come back to the engineering mm -hmm. side. And so we have kind of transfer of technology between mm -hmm. the two teams going back and forth. I guess he wants to know whether the cash, do you guys have enough cash to we do. build the profitability? Yeah, no, we have uh, more mm -hmm. than enough cash to kind of yes. get to, mm -hmm. to where we need to get to. That point. Yeah, if so. we need more cash to produce more computers for customers, mm -hmm. that's a good thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, uh, okay. Even if you have to wait to receive the cash because you the customers that will pay on, on delivery, mm -hmm. you can finance that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so those are good problems. I take those problems and need it. Yeah. yeah. We have sufficient cash to get to profitability. All right. Uh, and the last question is for Peter. What is your management philosophy? People want to know that. Ooh, um, geez, that's a good question. <laughs> Tough question, um, right? You know, um, back in the 90s when um, uh, Bill Gates and Microsoft mm -hmm. was kind of the company. Mm -hmm. um, and they asked Bill Gates what was his management mm -hmm. philosophy. He gave an answer which I really liked. Um, he said, I hire people um, to do work for me and I trust them to do it. Mm -hmm. And I don't like micromanaging them. Mm -hmm. um, and if I find myself micromanaging them, then I know that's a sign I need to find a new leader. Mm -hmm. right. And so I use basically the same same philosophy. Mm -hmm. um, I try very much to hire the best people I possibly can. I don't like micromanaging people. That seems to me if I'm there, then I've done something wrong and I've hired the wrong person. So um, I try to give kind of our senior leadership team um, the room to be able to do what they need to do without a lot of management. Um, and so far we've been you know, very successful mm -hmm. of, of hiring kind of some of the best and um, my goal at the end is I guess maybe Bill might have said it uh, in a different way his goal was not to do lots of management but to hire a bunch of good people <laughs> right. who actually do it for him so I guess on the same way. <laughs>